Hey, 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 it's your girl Evelyn here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. And so I wanted to do a video today to talk about kind of what my channel is all about. Like I do these videos and I sometimes I forget that there's like new people in the family or that I kind of changed direction over the years. And so I know that it can feel sometimes maybe like my videos are a little disjointed or they're not connected, but I promise you they are. And my premise is that um, what I like to talk about is basically living with intention. And I realized that I haven't really defined that. You know, if you've been watching any of the live streams with me and Patricia, there's an undertone there of living with intention, you know, whether it's, you know, she's talking about designing your life and I'm talking about curating your life and finding your flavor. There is this element of intentional living. And I realized that I've always lived this way, but I realized that that is not how a lot of people live. And so I thought I would first define what I mean when I say intentional living and kind of talk about what that means from my perspective and then share with you like how you can, if, if this is not something that you've been doing, how you can start doing it and what that could look like for you. So um, I guess to give a little bit of background, it like there was a quote that came later in my life, but I realized that my mother had basically been putting me on a path of intentional living since I was a little girl. Like my mom was super huge into we're doing this for your personal growth and development. Like it's like a running joke now because I'm so into self-development, personal growth and development that I think I've surpassed her. But I do remember being a little girl and her using that phrase on me like, oh, we're doing this because it's good for your personal growth and development. We're doing this because it's good for your personal growth and development. And I mean, I may be a little biased, but I think I turned out pretty good. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm really into personal growth and development. And that's one category. But intentional living is something else um, that I think personal growth and development is a component of intentional living. And so I actually heard, I can't remember who, who was it that said this? They were talking, they said the phrase, you have to tell your money where to go or you'll wonder where it went, right? And so for me, I took that phrase and this is now my own phrase. And I say, you have to tell your life where to go or you'll wonder where it went. And so sometimes I see experience hear people and their life experiences. And I'm like, girl, you're not in the driver's seat of your own life. So one of my good friends and I, we, we have this thing that like people need to get in the driver's seat of their own life. And we joke that like, sometimes people aren't even in the passenger seat. Sometimes they're not even in the back seat. Sometimes they're not even in the trunk. Sometimes they're hanging onto their life by the spoiler on the back. Right. And they're just letting life do this to them. And they just let life happen to them versus being really intentional about the areas that they can influence and control. So it's not that you we can control everything that happens to us in life, right? There's there's a lot of things that are outside of our control, but there's a lot of things that are in our control and under our influence. And so intentional living is about just that being really, really intentional about those areas. So if you just think about that phrase, tell your life where to go versus wondering where it went. And I'll give a really, really small example. So for the longest time, when I had graduated from engineering school, I was like, I want to go to culinary school. I want to be a chef. I don't want to be an engineer, blah, blah, blah. This is where we were, right? And so um, I remember three months before I was getting ready to graduate, my friend was like, so what's next? Like, are you coming back to engineering? Like, you've done the whole culinary school thing. Like, what's the plan, right? And I remember that I had been so focused on going to culinary school that I hadn't thought past it. That I hadn't thought like what happens once I go and when I graduate and I was panicked because I didn't have a plan that I had been so focused on this one goal in this one area of my life that I hadn't really cultivated any other areas of my life and I hadn't even thought about what was going to be the plan post culinary school right and it really cost me I, I remember graduating and even though I kind of knew at that point like oh I need a plan I was like trying to play catch up because I was in the moment I was trying to create a plan in the moment and it took me some time to find my footing and when I say time I mean years because I hadn't been living intentionally I had been fo so focused on achieving this one thing that I hadn't really said this is where I want my life to go this is who I want to be right so not just career wise but I think a lot of us 
you know, okay, this is what I want to do in life. Or maybe you've changed careers because you realize what you thought you wanted to do at 18 is not what you want to do at 35, right? And so I think that's great. But when it comes to the kind of woman you want to be, the kind of life that you want, I think we're sometimes really clear about what we don't want, but we haven't been really clear on what we want. And even then, even then, the challenge that I've run into, the challenge that my friends have run into, is like we know what we want, but we're making decisions that are going in the opposite direction of what we want. And they're not even necessarily bad decisions, but we're taking jobs, we're taking opportunities, we're engaging in things that will not get us to where we say we want to go. They're actually in direct conflict with that. And it's like, yo, what's up with that? You know what I mean? So one of the things that I have decided to do, and I'm so excited to share it with you pretty soon, is I've created, um, and I put in the final touches, and you know, I've talked about this community, but I, I, always, I, I felt like there was a prerequisite required before being in the community because the work I want to do in the community, you need to have cer- certain things in place to be able to do and be the kind of the kind of space that I wanted to be. And so I'm creating kind of like a prerequisite course called Find Your Flavor, similar to what I talked about years ago on my channel, but it has been way updated. I've grown a ton since then. And it's really about getting clear on who you want to be as a woman and what I like to call the 11 focus areas, right? And so, you know, I'm going to be taking you through exercises on how to get clear about what you want, what you don't want, and 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 then how to get on the path to start cultivating that, right? So when it comes to intentional living, you have to know not only what you don't want, um, but you have to be clear about what you want and you have to be unwavering, un- uh, relentless, you know, unforgiving uh, about what you want. It, it has to become a non-negotiable. Otherwise, you will let life and the ebbs and flows of life take you wherever it wants to take you. And don't get me wrong, there's a school of thought of people who like to live that way. So this is not about um, people who just want to go where the wind blows. I feel like there's going to be enough storms in my life that are going to knock me off my feet. I've had several um, that that's enough for me. You know what I'm saying? And so in the areas where I can influence and I can cultivate the life that I want, I want to do that. So, you know, walking through all these different areas of your life, getting clear on what you don't want, you don't want. Are you happy? I don't want to say happy. Are you content with the way things are? And there's this there's this belief that if you want more, you can't be content. And I think two things can be true. I can be grateful and thankful and humble and content with where I am. And I can also desire to grow or have more in a certain area. And I don't know if people are slowing down enough and really prioritizing to evaluate these areas on a consistent basis to even know that something else is possible. Like I remember when I had when I had finally left my corporate job, I had graduated from culinary school. One of my early clients was a former coworker. I was doing an anniversary dinner for her and her husband. And I remember this was like before I was taking payments online. Like I was like really like, you know, just making it work. And um, so I went to my old corporate office, the headquarters of this company to pick up her deposit. Right. And so I'm in the lobby and I'm in my white chef jacket and whatever. And this guy that I used to work with comes down and he's like, what do you have on? And I was like, I have on a chef jacket. He was like, are you in research and development now? Like what's going on? I was like. I don't work here anymore. I haven't worked here for like a year and a half, right? Because I mean, it's a, it's a really, really, it's a Fortune 100 company. And so I was, at, I worked at their headquarters, right? And so uh, he was like, oh, where are you working now? I said, why? Well, I, I work for myself. I said, you know, I quit. Um, I said, I decided to go to culinary school and follow my passion for food. I'm not an engineer anymore. And I, I, will, I will never forget the look on his face. I know his name. I know what he looks like. I remember this moment. I remember where we were standing because it was so pivotal to me. And it was, it was, it was a couple of things. It was humbling what he said. It was eye-opening what he said. And it was sad what he said all at the same time. And I remember he looked at me and he said, You're what? You did what? And I said, yeah, I quit. I went to culinary school. I changed careers. You know, that just wasn't for me. And he was like, I just remember he hung his head and shook his head. And he said, 
this is all I've ever known. This is this is all I've ever known. And I remember he just walked away from me. Like he didn't even say bye. He didn't ask me nothing else. He just was like, man, this is this is all I've ever known. And I think he was about 10 years, maybe 15 years older than me at the time. And I, I, I felt that so intensely because I knew what he was saying. Like, I didn't know another life was possible. I didn't know that things could be different. There there was so there was so much in his comment and his body language. I don't know if I'm doing it justice. I don't know if I'm conveying it properly. And I remember feeling so sad because I knew that he had been awakened to a possibility that life could be different and not even that his life was bad. I don't not sure if his life was bad, but that he might not he may have felt it was too late or he was too far deep or he couldn't make the change. And the thing is, you always can. But I think that was one of those cases where he probably curate. I mean, he probably collected what he thought he was supposed to do, what kind of career he thought he was supposed to have. And he just let it happen. And, you know, maybe he was semi intentional about a couple of things, but this is just where he was in life. And that's just how it's going to be. And I fundamentally believe that a different life is just a decision away that we are where we are in life because we are a sum total of the decisions that we've previously made previously made and so if I don't like where I am in a certain area of my life then what I'm really saying is I don't like the decisions that got me here and so if I want to be somewhere else obviously based on that formula then I can make a different decision and so I've decided to do that in every area of my life I've decided to take stock take inventory of What's going well? What's growing well? What's cultivated well? What's curated well? What's not? What kind of decisions have led me to this point? How do I make a different decision? What could it look like? What's available? What's out there? What, you know, I can have a different experience if I so choose. And if I so choose to do the work to have a different experience. You know, I I remember working for the same company before I got to their headquarters And people used to complain about their job all the time and how they hated it. And I'm pretty sure this happens at a lot of companies. And I remember thinking, well, then get another job or do something else. It's like just decide. Right. And so I think people were shocked because I made a different decision. I genuinely meant it when I said I didn't enjoy it. I didn't feel like that was my calling. And and so I made a choice to make a different decision and people could be like well you this you didn't have this or whatever everybody has something there's always going to be obstacles and it's so cliche when people says there's never the right time there's never this it never is but life is going to happen anyway and so I remember at that moment going I choose to be in the driver's seat I don't want somebody else to tell me when I can get promoted I don't want somebody else to tell me what the cap on my income can be. I don't want somebody else to tell me when I can take vacations and when I can take off and how long is okay for me to grieve. I, you know, and, and not just in my career, but I was like, who I want to be as a woman. Like it was something as small. I remember this It's written in one of my journals, working in engineering and even subsequently in the culinary field. And I know I'm using a lot of work examples, but I think that you can get the point from work examples that this could be anything, right? I remember it's something so small. It's written in one of my journals that I was like, I just want to be able to wear a nail polish. Because I worked in for a food manufacturing company, I could not wear nail polish. And then subsequently, when I started working in professional kitchens, I could not wear nail polish. And I was like, I want to be able to wear nail polish. So how can I do what I love and be in an environment where I can have nail polish? Now, I don't have nail polish on today because I'm getting ready to wash my hair. Um, But... That's neither here nor there. But do you see what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I want a different experience. I want to be able to wear my nail polish. And I had this nail polish at the time, y'all. Listen, I know this is crazy. I had this nail polish at the time, y'all, called Pinkalicious. I don't even remember the brand. And I loved that nail polish. And I never got a chance to wear it. It was was always, well, I got to go to work. I got to be in the kitchen. I got to be this. And I remember thinking, I got to do something different. You know, I remember the day that I decided that I didn't want to be a lukewarm Christian. Um, and this may be controversial. So, you know, if if spirituality and faith is not your thing, listen, no offense, take the meat, spit out the bones. But I remember going, I remember, I remember the moment I decided that I didn't want to play church and that I didn't want to play being a Christian. I, I just remember that I had been around people who said they believed in God and believed in Jesus who went to church, 
but there was no fruit there. You know, they did all the motions of being a Christian or being a believer, but there was no evidence. There was no habits. There was no routine. There was no cultivation of their faith. And I remember deciding, I don't want to just go through the motion. I don't want to play play. Like God ain't for play play. You know what I'm saying? Um, Play with your friends. Don't play with God. Okay. And I just remember, you know, having that defining kind of like decision in my life of going, I want to do this. I want to be this kind of person in my faith. And then making a decision and going in a different direction, right? Um, and it's, it wasn't about judgment or whatever. It's about, I wanted a different experience. I saw people who I felt had r- real genuine relationships with God and their faith and their spirituality. And I wanted that. And what I was doing and who I was around and the decisions that I was making weren't weren't pushing me in that direction right they weren't influencing me in that direction and so I remember T.D. Jakes once said there's nothing as powerful as the power of a made-up mind and if you think about any area of your life that you have changed or improved drastically the first thing you did was you made a decision and when you think about the word decide it means to cut right this is no longer an option here's a better example it's more career related I remember I had changed careers and um, I knew I didn't want to be an employee, but I I was kind of trying to do the entrepreneurship thing, but I always was like, oh, I'm going to have, you know, being an employee in my back pocket. And for years, you guys, I was in and out of entrepreneurship job, entrepreneurship job, entrepreneurship job, right? And it's because I hadn't made a decision. Either am I going to be an entrepreneur or am I going to be an employee? Not... I got a backup plan. I need to make a decision because I needed to focus all of my energy and my decisions and my thoughts in one direction. I, you know, you can't be double minded. I couldn't go grow in two different directions. I couldn't cultivate a really, really strong corporate career and cultivate a really, really strong entrepreneurial brand at the same time. Maybe some people have done it. I didn't know how to do it. But the whole point of intentional living was I had to get really clear about what I wanted, even in the business, you know, even when it came to this channel, even when I decided to go natural or return to be a natural, whether I decided I had to decide what kind of friend I wanted to be, what kind of daughter I wanted to be, right? Um, how I wanted to take care of myself, how I wanted to look, so many different things. I had to get really clear about what I didn't want, but more importantly, what I did want. And then I had to structure my life in such a way that it led me in that direction. And that takes effort. It takes work. It takes discipline. It takes a lot of self-reflection, a lot of self-healing. It takes a lot. And I realized that that doesn't make me special or better for doing that. It just makes me decided. It makes me, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just convinced that that's what I want. And I, I have, I have grace for people who that's not what they want or, the work that's required to do it, some people just aren't ready for and don't want to be ready for. And that's okay too. It's just not for me. And so when it comes to intentional living, it, it it really is about how do I get clear on what I believe, my faith, my morals, my values, who I want to be in these 11 focus areas. And then how do I go start the process of cultivating my life to go in that area? Uh, and, and how do I continuously make this decisions that move me along that journey? Because it's not necessarily a destination. Intentional living is a way of life, right? You know, my days are structured based on who I want to be. My life is structured based on who I want to be. What, my buying decisions, what how I spend my time, um, where I go are based on who I desire to be, who I am constantly becoming. That's intentional living. So let me know in the comments below. Do you feel like you're an intentional liver? Liver? Liver. (laughs) Uh, Is that something you're interested in? Do you like these kind of videos? I know I've been long-winded in my past couple of videos, but listen, bear with me. Um, I just like to let it flow. Just let go. Like singing is not my ministry. Listen, I have not cultivated that. I don't have the voice for that. Let me tell you, if I was a singer, y'all wouldn't be able to tell me nothing. I'd be probably half naked on somebody's stage. God knew. He was like, nah, not you. You don't know how to act. <laughs> you don't know how to act. You cannot. So uh, as much as I love music, singing is not my ministry. Even though almost all of my friends can sing. It just it, It's kind of like a cruel and unusual punishment. 
Anyway, I digress. But let me know in the comments below. Do you feel like you're being intentional with you li your life? Or do you feel like, you know, life is passing you by? Or do you feel like life is dragging you down the highway? Um, and uh, let me know what questions you have about t intentional living. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>